Hello and welcome to the webcast. Today we are going to be taking a look at creating a brand new drawing file inside SOLIDWORKS. The webcast should last around 15 minutes and it will give you all the information required to get up and running with 2D drawings inside SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so we've got this part file on screen and it's completed. We're happy with the design as a whole. And the next thing we'd like to do is create ourselves a 2D drawing. Now, just before we do that, there are additional amounts of information that you can add to your part files, which can really aid you in the 2D drawing uh, process. So what we're actually going to do on this file is we're going to add in some custom properties. So custom properties are additional information that you can add to your 3D models, which can then be brought through into the 2D drawing. The reason that we'd add that information to the 3D environment rather than type it out in the 2D environment is that this part file, for example, might be used in multiple assemblies. And that same information can then be shown in the bill of materials or the drawing for that specific assembly. So it's removing the need to re-enter and retype that information multiple times. So in the part file, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our properties from the file menu. And we're going to add in some properties. Now you can see here I've already got one typed in called description. I'll just delete that. In order to add a new property in, you firstly have to pick a property name. This can be something that you manually type in yourself. So it could be a specific uh, category that your company uses for reference numbers, for example, or it could be something that you pick from the drop down list. Now, this list is predefined. So we've got things such as description, part number, revision, etc. Some of these require you to manually enter a value. Some of them can be linked to the model and be parametric. So let's add in a description. We're also going to pick a part number. Uh, maybe we'll choose a material and also a weight. Now, the description is something that you are going to have to type in yourself. So in here, we're just going to put in a description. Uh, let's call this front rod. We're going to give it a part number, which in my case, I'm just going to call it the same thing as the file name. OK, and then we come down to material and weight. Now, the material has actually already been specified. You can see here on the left hand side that we're using this 1060 alloy. We don't want to have to type that in again, because what might happen is if we then go into the model and change the material, the two things aren't going to match because they're not linked in any way. So when it comes to things such as material and weight, you can actually pick from this drop down list and specify material. And what it then does is it puts this syntax in which looks back at the model, finds what material you're using and references that in the evaluated value. Similarly for weight, if we pick mass, it will obviously look at the volume of the file, multiply that out by the material that you've picked. And it will give you your evaluated value for the weight. So that's a little bit of setup that you can do inside the part file prior to going into the 2D drawing. So we'll just accept that off. OK, so we're now ready to actually create the drawing. And the way we're going to do this is by coming up to our file menu and we've got the option to say make drawing from part. As soon as we select that, it will take us to our template area. Now, this will look different depending on how your machine's set up. I'm currently working in the advanced area. It may be that you're working in this area here and you just have one option. You can toggle this by clicking the advanced or novice button. And you'll then have a number of different templates. So depending on what paper size you'd like to pick, you can obviously uh, choose your template from there. I'm just going to go for this uh, C size paper template and we'll click OK. It then takes me into the 2D environment. Now, in terms of the layout and the interface, everything is laid out in a familiar fashion to what it is in the 3D environment. The main difference is that we're working in a 2D paper space in the viewport rather than a 3D environment. There's a few different ways that you can add your drawing views in, and I'll run through a couple of these. One way is to use the standard three view. So from the view layout tab that sits up in the top left hand corner, you've got this option for standard three view. If we click that, it'll bring any documents that we've currently got open in SOLIDWORKS into this window. Pick the one you're interested in. So this is the file name and then 
you don't have to do anything else other than hit the green tick. What that will do is it will take that particular file, create a standard three projected view and drop that onto your paper space. If you want to add in some additional views, you can then further project from these views. So again, back up on your view layout tab, you've got this option for projected view. If I click into that and select one of these views, as I start dragging my cursor, it will drag out a top view, a bottom view, left and right. If you go out at an angle, it will also give you isometrics. Now you will see that as you're dragging out in any of these projected views, it won't allow you to drag that view out of line. So you can see that we've got this gray dotted line coming out at 45 degrees. If I want to break that 45 degree alignment, you have to hold control down on your keyboard. That will break the alignment and you're then free to move that view and position it wherever you like. So that's using the three standard view and the projected view button. What you can also do is use the palette. So I'm just going to delete these views that we've just added in. And we're going to use the palette on the right hand side. So four icons down, we've got the view palette, and you can see that it presents me with all of the views available from that particular file. If it's not showing that file or it's showing another file that you've got open, hit the drop down button at the top here and you can pick the file you're interested in. And sometimes you do just have to quickly hit the refresh button for the views to update. If you then want a specific view, it's just drag and drop. So I'm going to go for a front view, which I'll drag into the bottom left hand corner. And then you'll see as I start moving my cursor, it wants to automatically project those additional views for me. If it's not doing that, the reason it might not be projecting is because in the view palette, you have to have this auto start projected view option ticked. So if we do that again, make sure that that option is ticked, drag and drop your first view on, and then any subsequent views should automatically be projected. And it's just a single click in order to place those views. Okay, there are some additional views that you may want to use, so such as section views and detail views. All of these exist on your view layout menu. So we've got uh, auxiliary, section, detail, broken out sections, for example. We'll just put a few of these in. Let's start with a section view. A section view is as simple as drawing or positioning the line where you want to cut through the model, and it will then give you that cut view. We've got some options here on the left hand side for how you want that cutting line to be positioned. A little shortcut for you as well as if you tap the tab key, it will actually toggle through the orientations of that cutting line. So it's slightly quicker uh, than having to go over and actually pick it from the menu. We're going to snap in the section line directly through the middle of these two holes. As soon as we do that, we've then got a few other options by putting notches in and offsets, etc. I'm just going to hit the green tick. For a straight line and then i'm going to drag across and position my section somewhere over here it automatically adds the hatching for you and it even tags it up section aa uh, back to the section aa cut line if you wanted to add a detail view in so blow up a certain area give it a bit more um, room on the page we can do that as well so i'm just going to take this detail view and maybe just draw a circle uh, around this area here for example it puts it on my cursor and then I can take that away and position it wherever I'd like to put it, let's say up there. Now those custom properties that we added in at part level, where are they and how are they relevant in the 2D drawing? Well, we added four properties in. We gave it a part number, a description, a weight, and also a material. If we zoom into the bottom right hand corner, you can see that that information has automatically been brought through. We've got our material, our title, our description, and also the weight here. So that's where you really see the benefit. You don't have to start typing in the title block and manipulating these values. You type it all in or link it from the part file and it automatically populates the 2D drawing for you. How about if we wanted to show some of that information though elsewhere? So it doesn't want to be just in the title block. We want to put it somewhere else on the model. Well, let's add a note in. So if we add a note in and highlight this particular view, and maybe we want to reference the material, for example. So I'm going to go onto the annotations tab, and you can see that one of the options on here is to add a note in. So if I pick this note option, I'm just going to snap it 
to this model. You'll notice that if you pick an edge or a face, you can get a slightly different anchor point. So if we pick a, a face, it gives us this little blob or ball. If we pick an edge, it will give us an arrow. Now in this note, we can just type in information, whichever we like, or alternatively, we can link back to the properties of the part file. So over on the left hand side, we've got some icons and it's a second icon in link to property. That will take me to a dialog box and I can pick where I want the property to come from. So I'm going to say model found here because it's the model information we're looking for. And we'll say um, component to which the annotation is attached because we've actually anchored to that component. And then in the list, we can pick the property that we're interested in. And you'll see these top few are the ones that we've typed in. So uh, let's say material. As soon as we pick that, it actually fills in the material of the part file. And the benefit of that is that if the material of the part file changed for any reason, let's say we changed it to a, a grade of stainless steel instead of an alloy, it will automatically update the notes and update the title block for us as well. So it's maintaining that link, making sure that nothing is ever out of sync with each other. OK, how about adding some dimensions in? Well, the dimension tool that you use inside the 2D drawing is exactly the same as the dimension tool that you use in the 3D environment. So there's no learning curve here. You use exactly the same tool and add the dimensions in in exactly the same way. So we're going to pick the smart dimension tool from the top left hand corner here. And let's just start adding some dimensions in. So if I wanted to say the distance between the center of this circle and the center of that circle, I can just pick those two diameters and it will jump to a linear dimension for me. Similarly, let's go between these two and it will snap to a linear dimension. If you want to add in radiuses or diameters, just pick the edge of the radius or the diameter and it will automatically feed back that information for you as well. Now we've added a section view over here on the right hand side. This would be a great view to capture all the varying different depths of uh, the component. So let's stack up some of these as well. And also the height of this boss. And we can obviously align these up and uh, move them around wherever we like. If you want to flip your arrowheads, so sometimes you'll find that the arrowheads sit on the outside and you want them to be on the inside of the lines, you can actually just click those and hit the little ball and it toggles it from one way to the next. So it's entirely up to you how you want your dimensions to be uh, positioned and your arrowheads to be aligned. OK, in terms of scale and also the display style of your drawing views, you can bring the display style through however you like. So this is just using a standard hidden lines removed style where we can see all the tangent edges and all the physical edges, but we can't see through the model. If I wanted to select, say, this drawing view, and make it shaded we can modify its properties over here on the left hand side so we could just say shaded we could say shaded with edges and so on and so forth sometimes when you say shaded with edges in a 2d drawing you might find that the tangent edges are a little overpowering and you can't quite see the definition you're interested in so if we have a view selected we can come up to the view menu and come on to uh, display and we've got the option to say tangent edges removed or tangent edges with font. So if we say tangent edges removed, what it will then do is remove the tangent edges from that particular view, which just gives you that little bit more clarity. So we're not seeing duplicate edges uh, around where all the radiuses are. Similarly, in terms of scale, the way that the scalings worked on this paper space is as I've dragged and dropped the views in, the software has automatically picked a scale which suits the size of the component to the size of the sheet. If for any reason that is wrong, maybe the views that you've uh, brought in are very, very large or very, very small, you can change your scale quite quickly from the bottom right hand corner here. Currently mine's set to one to one. I can change it one to two, two to one, five to one, etc. Each individual view can be modified as well. So let's say that I want this detail view here to be bigger still. I could select that view, come into its properties on the left hand side and change where it says custom scale. Maybe I could make it four to one rather than two to one and uh, so on and so forth.
Okay, so that drawing's looking reasonably good. There's a little bit sparse on the dimensions, but obviously we could uh, go in and add some additional dimensions in. But I think we've highlighted there how we bring those views in, the properties that we can pull through from the 3D environment, how we'd add the dimensions, how we can change the scale of the entire sheet, each individual view, and also the appearance of each uh, view as well. Now, in terms of saving the document away, it's just a standard file save um, command, and it'll obviously save that information wherever you choose it. Just bear in mind, if you're not aware of this, the way that SolidWorks works is it doesn't actually store these views inside the 2D drawing. It always needs the part file in order to know what the views look like. So once you've got the 2D drawing, you must make sure that you obviously maintain the 3D model as well so the drawing can find that model when it opens itself up. In terms of saving the file away, you can obviously save it out in a few different formats as well. We could save this out as a DXF, a DWG, and you can also save it out as PDF and eDrawing. And all of that can be done from the standard file, Save As menu, and you've got your extensions there to pick from. Okay, so as I said, very brief introduction to 2D drawings inside SolidWorks. I hope everyone has found that useful. As ever, if you've got any questions, feel free to um, put those across to the support desk. But for now, I'll leave you with that. So thanks for listening.